Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. As I do most mornings, I get up, come in here, and turn on the equipment and uh, run the antenna up. By that I mean uh, tower is usually down and I go through the process. Let me back this up just a bit of uh, running it up and down. Some mornings um, I point it the wrong direction and I point it the wrong direction on purpose. I point it on the long path. So yesterday morning I did the usual procedure and turned the antenna around and what you might find interesting is um, not only the people that I contacted but the way that I did it. So I'm tuning around and I hear um, uh, a woman calling CQDX and uh, her call sign is um, DL5PIA and she's not real strong but S5, S6 and I called her and we made contact and I'll uh, bring her QRZ page up on the screen um, and let's let's take a look at what it says so her name was Petra and uh, she's in, she was operating from Germany uh, I think she has some other locations. Uh, relatively New Ham, licensed in uh, 2019. And the beam heading to her from my location is about 30 degrees. So we had a nice contact, and uh, at the end of the contact, she said, I'd like you to make uh, have a QSO with... Um, the second operator here, and that was uh, DL7PIA, and DL7 is PIA, and uh, PIA gave me a, a signal report, and I, I passed the signal report to her, and while we were talking, she said that she had um, been licensed since she was about 12, if I understood correctly, and I think now she's um, maybe uh, 15. So I had a neat contact with a mother and daughter team in, in Germany. Pia was about uh, S5, S6. Perfect English. And I heard them both um, working other stations in German and Italian and Spanish. Now here's what's interesting. Beam heading to uh, Germany is about 30 degrees, and that would be short path. But that's not the direction that I heard them. They were working Italy and Spain and other places, and their antenna, it wasn't pointed down, but it's pointed south. And so I worked them on the long path. Not only did I work uh, Pia and Petra on the long path, I also worked um, a friend in uh, South Africa and uh, a couple of friends in Italy on the long path and also a um, really good friend uh, EA5 uh, uh, JZ uh, Paul in, uh, in Valencia, uh, Spain. So it was fun to do that but I worked them on the long path which is not 180 degrees it's slightly more than that and when we look at this program I'm going to bring up you'll see why it's just slightly skewed so it, Europe is a few more degrees South Africa is pretty much for me 90 degrees so um, the other guy that I worked was uh, uh, ZS1 RJQ beam hitting to him is 94 degrees so I was at about 275 or so to work um, uh, uh, Mike Cork Michael Cork Anyway, so what is the long path? Where does it come from? And uh, how long have I been doing it, I guess, might be the, the, uh, the next question. And the answer to that is since uh, 1964. And I lived in a place uh, in Burbank where it was on the side of the Verdugo Mountains. And there was just a terrible path. To Europe it was right into a mountain and there was just no way around it but then I discovered with the help of a friend that there was a long path and I worked hundreds of countries 
putting my antenna basically the wrong way. But the guys in Europe are doing the same thing. They would call CQ long path, as I've done some mornings, um, and generate lots of contacts. It's not as popular today as it was then. So what I'd like to do, what I'm going to do rather, is to uh, bring up a program from Simon Brown, G4ELI, and it's Simon's World Map. And it's an incredible program uh, that has tons of detail. You can customize it. It doesn't take a lot of horsepower to run it. And it, it will show the the uh, the gray line, which is what I put try to put my signal into. That's not a very good explanation. So let's take a look at um, this uh, program from Simon Brown G4 ELI uh, Simon's World Map, and I'll get it up on the screen here. Now, Simon's map is, um, like I said, customizable and. Now here is my location, and uh, I made the size of that large. You can make it large or small. There's four four steps in its size, and the way to do that is to uh, come on over to here where it says home, and you enter the lat and long, and tell it how big you want the little house icon to be, and it puts it right on the map. Now, as you can see on this map, uh, it's showing the lights, and we can see how sparsely lit up Africa is, parts of Brazil and the rainforests, Australia, um, India. Now, this isn't very helpful because it's night everywhere, and that doesn't happen very often. So. Let's bring up another map. Okay, there we go. So here's another map, and I can add various things to this map. One of the things I'm going to add is my sunrise and sunset, and I'm going to bring that up so it's in, in the corner, and you can see my sunrise is at 0643. Sunset is almost five o'clock about 1700 and let's put on time zones I'm gonna add a clock at the bottom I'm recording this at 9 22 in the evening and I can change the size of of this let's bring up space weather also because that's handy to have so here is the solar flux and the a oh the a and k are quite low Tomorrow, if it's if it holds tomorrow, it could be pretty good. As was today. Now I can um, add borders. I can uh, indicate satellites. I think I'd rather do prefixes. So let's put in the ham radio prefixes. And there they go. Now let's do the gray line because that's what this is really about. So I've started up the gray line. And as I said in a prior video, it's the difference between night and day, light and dark. So here I am in the evening at 2123. And my sunrise is way over here. Now one thing I can do is go to clock on the tabs, go to offset, and bring this up. Let's do current time. And I can pick the day, either today or tomorrow, last week, yesterday. Yesterday when I worked, uh, saw a lot of DX, so here's today. And let's back that up if I can go far enough. Uh, maybe, you, yeah. Okay, so here's that gray line as it was this morning. What is right over my house? Uh, the time down here indicates uh, roughly seven o'clock. And I'm going to slide this guy out of the way onto another monitor. And 
you can see that if I point my antenna on the long path, now this this orientation does not represent the beam heading. It it this is a flat picture of the Earth, and because of that, there's a bunch of distortion how things appear. But it was a little bit after this um, seven o'clock, and so I'm going to slide this forward just a bit, about like that where I heard uh, Pia and Petra and as you, as you can see if I can put my antenna into this path it doesn't curve uh, the way it appears on here um, we can look at another map and it's mostly a water path until it gets to Africa and then it may have one bounce somewhere in here but here is a Delta Lima or Germany. Here's where Paul Paul is, uh, EA5JZ. In fact, let's go and do one other thing. Um, I'm going to click on stations. And there's Pia and Petra. I'm going to say they need to appear. So here's uh, DL5PIA and DL7PIA. <clears throat> In the short path is a beam heading at 31 degrees, but in essence it's about 235 degrees. Now here's uh, EA5JZ in Valencia. He's right here. Beam heading to him is about 40, 45 degrees. And oftentimes when he's um, he's on the air there is both long and short path, especially in the afternoon, and we'll come to that in a minute. And there's a uh, Arch uh, H0U and um, the good friend uh, Craig K7GI and he, what's interesting is that his sunrise his gray line path is ahead of mine by about an hour so he is often let me slide this back he's often working stations on the long path now he may have be making contact with uh, uh, 9K200 or 9K2GS or A41MO or A71 because he's got a path to the Middle East. When I get on the air and when I have sunrise, that path is gone. It's now dark there. So the difference is that I now have an opening to Germany and later in the morning to um, Paul EA5JZ and also almost on a daily basis uh, stations in South Africa. This is uh, Peter and Mike, ZS1 Papa Zulu and ZS1 RJQ. So that's the long path in the morning. So it's south and west for me. And then in the evening, it's to the north, northwest and Right now, there's a chance to work India in the evening. It's fairly short opening, but also a little bit before that. Uh, back this up just a bit. Um, guys in this region, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, China, JA, um, out here in the Pacific, some of them. And here's what it looks like uh, from space and you can see what my path might look like to different parts of the world. Now let's do one other thing. Um, go back to here. This gray line, let's move this over my house again. The shape and direction, the shape and uh, locations from my house varies from week to week, month to month, and to show that I'm going to advance this by um, a month at a time. So I'm going to go to December 1st and then I'm going to just pulse it forward a month at a time. There's January, February, March, April. See how different that is? May, June, July. That's uh, Simon's program, uh, G4ELI, 
whether you're interested in the long path or not, it'll show you what areas you're likely to have um, a path to at certain times of the day. Is it 100% accurate? Is it guaranteed? No, it's not. Uh, but it is an indication, and a lot of times it's it's right on. Um, it's a guide, the A and K index, the solar flux, the month, a whole bunch of things can affect um, your ability to work into that gray line. And the idea is to get your signal into that gray line. So gray line, gray line is kind of like uh, the best analogy I can think of, which isn't very good, is a curl on a wave that a surfer might get a surf surfboard into and just follow that and, until it fades, uh, dissolves. And we're trying to do that too. So we can go the long way around the planet and oftentimes that signal all the way around the planet is stronger than it might be on the short path. There are exceptions to this for sure, um, but it is a pretty good indication. If there was a de-expedition coming up and you were interested in working that de-expedition, this coupled with looking at the cluster may give you a clue as to what your best time is. Um, clusters though can uh, also be a problem in that there are thousands of people who are looking at it at the same time. Uh, I'll put a link to Simon Brown, G4 ELI, Simon's World Map. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. I'm Jim, W6LG from Rockland, California. Thanks for watching and see you the next time.